Hi, my name is Manny, and I'm going to explain how Kong Enterprise can help you govern access to your APIs. Kong Enterprise helps organizations decentralize applications by providing routing and a central policy engine that enables you to secure and govern your APIs. Also, Kong provides a developer portal or API catalog to promote the discovery and reuse of the APIs you are governing through Kong. Today, we're going to focus on how Kong helps secure and govern your APIs. A common method to secure APIs uses mutual TLS or MTLS. MTLS means that both the REST client and the RESTful service mutually authenticate each other's identity. Kong lets you apply this functionality to any service or route with an out-of-the-box policy that lets Kong validate the client certificate for you. I'm going to show you how this works by sending an API request that fails because I did not send a certificate from my REST client. And then I'm going to show you an API request that successfully authenticates my client and shows the claims that were sent, which corresponds to my identity as defined by the certificate. We'll take a quick glimpse at the MTLS plugin as well. Let's get started. So I'm going to bring up Insomnia Designer which is my REST client, and I'm going to send a request to this endpoint, mtls-auth, where I'm validating client certificates. Now, when I send this request, you're going to see that I get a message saying no required TLS certificate was sent. This is because in my REST client configuration, I actually have not sent my certificate and key. Let me go ahead and check this box so the certificate is sent. And now when I send this request, Kong is going to validate the certificate and see that you'll see that I get a 200 and Kong actually puts my attributes in as claims here. So Kong was able to validate the certificate and we have an MTLS connection. Let's take a quick look at the MTLS policy so I know how Kong trusted this certificate on behalf of the service. If I go to the Kong Administration Console, I'm going to go to the MTLS auth route, and I'm going to go ahead and view that route and view the MTLS authentication plugin and edit the plugin. Now, in the plugin, you'll see that we have a CA certificate that's been loaded into Kong. This is how Kong knows to trust the CA that has signed the client certificate. We've loaded it into this plugin. Kong can also map the client certificate's attributes to a Kong consumer. And if we want to identify and apply specific policy to that consumer, we can do that. For example, rate limiting. The MTLS plugin also has a number of features to cache certificate validations, control how often revocation checking is done, and allow you to move this functionality to Kong instead of maintaining it in your service. So what did we just show you? We just showed you how MTLS allows both the REST client and the RESTful service to mutually authenticate each other's identity. This means you don't have to build MTLS auth into your service code, and you can reuse this functionality following a common standard in your enterprise. To speed up deployment, MTLS can also be configured using the admin API, the declarative configuration, and a Kubernetes manifest, allowing you to quickly configure Kong in your CI-CD pipeline. For the next use case, I want to take a look at another very common method to secure APIs. This method uses OAuth 2.0 tokens and the OpenID Connect framework. OpenID Connect also allows you to secure access to your APIs using a modern framework, and you can offload identity validation to a central identity provider. So I'm going to show you how this works with a human user that tries to log in to a uh, application that he doesn't have authorization to log into. Let's go ahead and get started. So let me bring up a new tab here and I'm actually going to log in. I'm going to actually bring up a new incognito window and log in to an authorization endpoint. You'll see here that Kong has intercepted my user and I'm going to have to authenticate. So let me go ahead and authenticate. Now, if I authenticate correctly, you'll see that Kong actually sends me 
to the upstream service with a bearer token, and you can see the claims from my actual user uh, user's token. Now, this user is allowed to log in because of a specific claim that exists in their token. Let's say I try to log in again, but with a different user that doesn't have authorization to access this application. Let me go ahead and close this incognito window and launch another incognito window. And I'm gonna go to the same endpoint. This time I will log in with a different user. And when I log in, you'll notice that this time I was authenticated, but I was forbidden access because I was not authorized. This is because the claim in my token does not, is not accepted by Kong, because I've told Kong to look for specific claims. So what do we just show you with OpenID? Well, we showed you that the Kong OpenID plugin will allow you to govern your API access with a modern authentication and authorization control. The logic for this access control can be deployed wherever you have a lightweight Kong node deployed. Similar to MTLS, you don't have to build this functionality into your services, so you can secure the services much faster and you can add fine-grained attribute-based authorization, which can be accomplished by a Kong node wherever it's deployed. Now that you've seen how you can secure and govern APIs with MTLS and OpenID policies, you may wanna empower your developers to deploy these policies themselves using roles-based access and delegated administrative capabilities to configure Kong using code. Please check out the video on governing API management with role-based access control. Thank you.